Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Shingwar and today we'll be talking about is it really possible to crack PGDB in 30 days or to prepare for PGDB in 30 days. So the answer is actually yes, but you'll have to be very efficient in your process. You have to be very strategic in your process. You have to do a lot of grinding in the next 30 days and then only you can do it. But definitely it's possible to do it and let's see how to do it. So I'll be introducing one strategy called simultaneous revision strategy because you cannot really revise things in such a short span of time. So let me give you a brief of this simultaneous revision strategy and we'll talk about it later in a detailed manner once I've discussed all the points. So basically what it looks like, let's say I have five topics. I'm, I'm doing five topics and today is my day one. Now I'm doing topic one completely. I'm practicing this topic one and I'm doing all the things. Now comes the day two. Now what I'll do, I'll study topic two. I'll practice topic two. But I also practice one question from topic one. So that is I'll be doing for, for every single topic the next day. So on day three, I'll be doing topic three. I'll practice topic three. And also I'll do one question from T1 and one from T2. So basically I'll be doing two additional questions on day three. And similarly on day four, I'll be doing T4. I'll be practicing T4 majorly. But I will also be doing one question from T1, one from T2 and one from T3. So why is this important? Because you have just 30 days or 25 to 30 days approximately to prepare for examination, right? You cannot study 20 topics in 30 days and also revise them. It's not possible. It's not humanly possible to do it in an efficient manner, right? So you have to practice them simultaneously to keep the concepts stay in your mind regularly. So that will help you practicing along with your preparation, right? So what you'll be doing? from day one to day 20, you are studying 20 topics and also you are revising them simultaneously by doing this strategy. And this will help you, you know, release your burden of the revision part once you are done with the topics. Otherwise what happens is on day 21, you'll, you'll think that, okay, I have to revise day one topic and you'll have to spend a lot of time in revising the day one topic because that was done long back and you have been doing different topics every single day. So it's, it's a good chance that you, ha you have forgotten some of the things of day one topic. So, but if you are doing just one question from day one topic every single day, every single day, it won't give you additional load. It won't give you additional panic, but definitely it will keep things in topics alive in your mind. So that is how you have to plan your simultaneous revision strategy. So that was just a brief of this strategy. And let's move forward to add different kinds of points. Now sectional priority order. I have discussed this in the 45 days video as well but I'll tell this again, once again. So our priority should be maths greater than DILR greater than VARC. Now let's first discuss about uh, the point of weightage in the written examination. So definitely mathematics has 50% weightage, DILR has 20% weightage and VRC has 30% weightage. Now it looks like that uh, VARC should be in the second number, but it's not. Why? Because of the ability to score. Now, one data point I would like to give to everyone based on uh, the recent convergence in PGDB from general category. So in case of mathematics, they almost scored in the range of 65 to 75 out of 75. Those who converted from general category. In case of DLR, this, uh, the score was around 27 to 30 out of 70, out of 30, not 75. Basically close to full marks over here, close to full marks over here as well. And in case of VARC, it was around 20 to 25 out of 45. Now you can see the difference. You are, if you are allocating equal amount of time to all three subjects, then probably you are doing injustice to maths and DLR where you could have scored more as compared to VRC. Basically you could have utilized the time given to VRC uh, for mathematics and DLR, right? So that is how you have to take this kind of priority order. I'm not saying to ignore VRC completely, but giving additional time to VRC just because it, it comes uh, under the 30% category that won't make sense because you cannot score after a point in case of VRC. The highest score was 38 out, out of 45. In case of mathematics and DL, it was full marks. So you can see the difference over here. And not everyone can score 38 out of 45, very few people. So basically those who have converted, even they haven't scored uh, 38 marks. Only one person could score 38 marks last year, right? So this is the typical range of marks, which uh, a general category student who gets converted in PGDB scores in VRC. So this is how you have to target your score and your uh, time allocation. Now talking about the final selection weightage. So uh, let's say 
two people are actually two candidates are actually scoring 120 marks both have equal marks but this one is scoring 75 marks in mathematics but this one is scoring 60 60 marks only but uh, this guy is scoring uh, you know 15 marks more in case of vrc but during the final selection if everything remains more or less same the profile or the interview profile everything remains more or less same in that case this person would be preferred this won't be preferred uh, if if we just talk about the comparison between two why because the course is actually highly mathematical and they want people who are good at mathematics rather than people who are good at verbal right so if you are scoring okay okay in verbal it's fine but if you are scoring okay okay in mathematics then it might hamper your selection final selection after the interview right so you have to score as much as possible in mathematics and this is how you should your priority order should look like so i would say you should give 60 to 70 basically 70% time for mathematics preparation and practice 15% time for dilr and 15% time for vrc that should be the ideal allocation of your time and resources for uh, different sections right now let us look at the historical bifurcation for mathematics because maths is the main subject in case of pg dv right so we have approximately 21 topics you can call uh, geometry and miscellaneous questions in some other topics but roughly you have 21 topics okay now you can clearly see the dominance of calculus and algebra i have made this kind of bifurcation because trends have been changing recently in last three years certain trends have changed and uh, certain different kinds of trends were there in the first four years so i have made the bifurcation between first four years and last three years right so in first four years uh algebra and calculus were dominant in the last years as well algebra and calculus will be dom are dominant and will be dominant in the future i can say for sure because they have been asking questions on a similar kind of grounds in case of trigonometry as well given the kind of syllabus it has very small syllabus it has but still a number the number of questions which have been asked in trigonometry are also good now here's the important part that is the coordinate geometry if you if you talk about the uh, you know uh, volume of syllabus of coordinate geometry it is as much as 10x times trigonometry but you can see uh, the number of questions which have been asked are more or less same in case of trigonometry and coordinate so i'll keep coordinate as the last priority for uh, doing my preparations right so this is my priority order for mathematics i'll start with trigonometry heights and distances in calculus then algebra and the last one would be coordinate geometry if you can do it then it's good if you cannot do it then also it's fine if you are targeting in the score in the range of 65 to 75 most of the straight lines and circles questions can be done with some jugad right it can be it's possible if you have decent basic concepts of coordinate geometry then most of the questions of coordinate geometry can be done with jugad and with options so that is a different thing i'm not saying to leave it completely but if you don't have time if you want to focus more on these three topics then also you are good to complete 85% of your syllabus and remaining 15% you can score 5 to 10% marks over here as well so that's that's quite doable if you have decent common sense and jugad okay and and i'm i'm talking about the strategy for those people who are starting right now I'm not talking about those who have been preparing for two months because for them they have to complete the entire syllabus there's no choice but for those who are starting right now and they have limited time in that case these three topics these three major topics should be a priority as compared to coordinate geometry based on the historical evidences now what about the plan for vrc i would say just one rc from rc campaign or gmat club both are free so just one rc from rc campaign or gmat club one every single day and one para jumble from past year cat papers that would do your entire work so this would hardly take 30 to 35 minutes for you to do it but if you do it consistently then you can see the change in your performance in the actual examination now if we talk about dilrs then one di set from or and one lr set from any of the book any of the cat book basically arun sharma or if you have registered for dilr campaign quiz then you can attempt one quiz or two quiz every single day and that would do the work for you right so only this this you have to do uh, for for every single day in the next 25 days and it will again hardly take 25 to 30 minutes max to max 40 minutes it won't take more than that so for dilr and varc maximum you can give 1.5 hours every single day but doing it consistently every single day it's not like you are doing it 5 to 6 hours on one day on on the weekend but remaining days you are not doing that won't help you improve in dl and varc so maximum of 1.5 hours for dilr and varc correct right? now how should a daily plan of simultaneous revision strategy should look like so you have day 1 next let's say you are doing sets and you are practicing 20 questions from sets that would cover your 
uh, all sorts of concepts in uh, sets now comes day 2 we are doing relations let's say and then 20 questions of relations and also one question of sets now comes day 3 but along with it you are also doing one one rc one pj one dilr same same over here one rc one pj one dilr same over here on day three let's say you are doing functions then 20 questions functions and one question of sets and relations so basically two questions so every single day you'll be adding one question from the previous topic and uh, keeping keep keep on doing that for the previous topics as well so for, for day three you'll be doing two additional questions for day four you'll be doing three additional questions right for day five you'll be doing four additional questions so that is how you you keep on doing you keep on revising the things which you have studied earlier and you know absorbing those concepts permanently in your mind before the examination then you won't have to revise uh, after the 20 or 25 days when once you have completed your syllabus now this you have to do for at least 20 to 25 days based on your capacity if you are able to complete the 20 topics in 20 days then you can definitely start practicing mixed questions and doing mocks after 20 days but you haven't if you can do it in 25 days then also it's fine the next five days can be you know considered as not the revision but i would say you know mixed practice keep on giving quizzes keep on giving mocks keep on giving sections on those five days and that would give you enough additional practice which you need for the actual examination so this is how you can plan your simultaneous revision strategy and i think this is the only way you can give your best shot for a pg debate 2023 in the remaining 30 days of preparation right so this video was still here only and all the best for your preparation do ping me on whatsapp or telegram for any kind of personal queries and i'll be happy to answer thanks for watching keep studying